In this video, we're going to be taking a look at vertical hanging masses. First, we're going to take a look at an example where both objects are at rest in equilibrium and then find the two tensions, which we'll call T1 and T2 for two different masses, a two kilogram mass and a five kilogram mass. And then secondly, we're going to do a slightly more complicated version where we have two masses M1 and M2, and then we're going to solve for T1 in terms of those two masses. So for the first one, the first thing we want to do is always draw a force diagram. So if we're focusing on our orange mass of two kilograms, we have the force of tension pulling up, which we did call T1 a little bit earlier. And then we have two forces going downwards. We have T2 pulling down on the two kilogram object. And then we also have the force of gravity of the two kilogram object. Secondly, for our green mass, we have less forces on that one. For this one, it does also have its own force of gravity from the earth pulling it down. That's a force of gravity for the five kilogram mass. And it has T2 tugging upwards on it. Now with that in mind, we can go ahead and solve for um, our T1 and T2. So if we take a look at all the forces in the um, vertical direction, because there's none in the horizontal, we have T1 going upwards. So we're going to consider that one positive. And then we have T2 and then FG2 going downwards. So T1 minus T2 minus FG2. And that equals zero because the object is at rest. And then for the second one, we have just T2 going upwards. So T2 going up and then minus the FG of the five kilogram object going down. And that equals zero newtons as well, because that one's at rest. Now, what we want to do is go ahead and take this one first, because it's a little bit more simple, plug in some numbers and then solve for that T2. Now we have the T2, which is equal to 49 newtons. The force of gravity of any object is mass times 9.8. We knew the mass was 5, so 5 times 9.8 is 49. And then we added that to both sides, which gave us the T2 of 49 newtons. So we can go ahead and plug that 49 in right over here. And then let's plug in the rest of the values for this top equation and then solve for T1. All right, now for this one, because T1 is holding basically the two kilogram and the five kilogram mass, we had um, we added the T2 of 49 newtons, which we found below in blue. And then we did the FG for the two kilogram mass, two times 9.8. Um, when we took two times 19, um, excuse me, two times 9.8, we got 19.6, which was combined with this number, the 49. So we subtracted 68.6 and then added that to the right side, which made T1 equal to 68.6 newtons. All right, now we're done with the first problem and we had some numerical values there to work with. So that wasn't um, quite as difficult. For our second one, we're gonna imagine the whole entire system is accelerating upwards at five meters per second squared. So say for example, these vertical hanging masses were on an elevator and that was accelerating upwards. Now, if we were to solve for the M1 and M2, we would have a different set of equations. Um, we would still have this T1 going upwards. We would have the what we call the T2 going downwards. And then an FG for mass one going down. And then for the second one, we would still have that T2 tugging it upwards. And then this one would have the force of gravity from the mass number two. 
All right, so let's go ahead and set up two different equations. This is gonna look a little bit different. We're gonna have some more detail and more variables in this one. Okay, so for this one, um, we don't have a zero on this side because this side was at equilibrium. If there is no velocity, no acceleration, this whole entire side would be zero, but we do have a net acceleration of five meters per second squared because the whole system is moving upward at five meters per second squared. So just M1 is accelerating up at that rate. When you combine all of those forces, as we said, the T1 is going up, so that's positive, the T2 and then the force of gravity, which is mg, is downwards, okay? So same idea for the second one, t2 up, and then the m2g going downwards. Now, with this one, we have a, um, a few too many unknown variables. So oftentimes, what we're going to do is use a system of equations. So we could solve for the t2 over here and say that t2 equals, and then add this to both sides, the m2g, which means we would have um, m2 five from up here plus the m2g now we know that g is 9.8 so if both of these have a coefficient of five and 9.8 and both of them have an m2 those are things that could be added together then which would give us 14.8 times m2 and that would equal our T2. Okay, a lot of times the coefficient would be in the front, so this would be like a 5m2 and this would be a 9.8m2, and then we'd combine those coefficients. Um, either way, same idea. And then if we know T2 is this, then we can go ahead and plug that into our top formula and then simplify our top formula a little bit. So this one would be, so let's go ahead and cross this one out and then call this 14.8 m2 and then what we can do is if we add m1g to both sides it's actually going to look very similar to what we did over here in green on the bottom because both of these m1s have a coefficient this one of five and this one has the g which is 9.8 this is actually also 14.8 m1 equals t1 which was already there and then we have minus 14.8 m2 so we can go ahead and rearrange that and solve for t1 it's by adding 14.8 m2 to both sides which means that t1 would equal 14.8 m1 plus 14.8 m2. Now this one is a pretty specific case. Um, so depending on what you're solving for, um, if you're working with a problem like this, you're going to do something similar where you set up two um, F net formulas. We have one for the orange one and then one for the green one. And then you solve for one of the variables in terms of the other. So we got T2 in terms of m2 where we substituted up over here so that we could limit the amount of unknown variables. And then we saw for T1 in terms of M1 and M2. So I hope that was helpful in helping you analyze a vertical mass problem. Thank you for watching and listening.